Hi there. Um, this little workshop is dedicated to people out there and my friend in Canada is one of these people who find that they have tightness in their hips and their hamstrings and some movements, um, some Pilates movements can feel not great. So we're just going to have a look at some ways that maybe we can alleviate um, some of the problems for these movements. All right, so I just want us to start by a sitting posture. So lots of people struggle to sit on the floor without any support with their legs straight. It's really common. And sometimes what people will do, they'll think, okay, my legs have got to be straight. So often what will happen is that the back will round. So this, the way to alleviate that is two things you can do. If you bend your knees, then straight away, you're able to sit up taller. And the other thing is to just get something to sit on. And that again, just by having that little, little tiny prop there, often will allow people to go, okay, I can, my hips can release and I can, I can sit tall now, even with quite a small support. So two top tips for sitting postures that are uncomfortable. Please don't suffer and round. Um, much better to have a, a tall back and bent knees or support than have and come to here and feel not very happy. Okay, so um, we talk about hip flexors and if you just put your hands on the top of your hips and then literally lift up one leg and then the other, you'll probably feel towards the outside of the thigh a grippiness, a, a sort of tight ligament tendon, ten, tendon feel and those are your hip flexors which we need when we're walking, running, um, going upstairs so they're really valuable but sometimes they work too much okay so we're going to look at some things how we can actually maybe let them release and also tightness of hamstrings can be another issue um, in for, for some movements in pilates as well leg work so we're going to have a have a little play around at ways we can alleviate that the one thing as well in sitting which i haven't mentioned is rather than have legs Right. Sometimes just letting the knees go out to the sides a little bit in, in what are sometimes called diamond legs um, can be can be a, a more comfortable way of sitting with a straight back. You may feel still grippy here. I feel grippy here at the moment. Um, yeah, I put my hands here. My arms can take take over, so I can kind of release here. Okay, so let's just um, move through a few Pilates classic movements and. Think of hips. All right. So um, we start our start positions are often here with the heavy hips and the ribs and the head, and it's this is a really nice position to let the hips really release. If you just have a little feel there, hopefully um, there's a lot of softness. If there isn't, kind of encourage it. You can do. I mean, sometimes we're, they're working so hard that they they grip more than they, a lot of the time. So you can just lie here with the hips nice and relaxed, hip flexors. And the other top tip is you can just then maybe let the knees fall together. And that just allows support. The knees are, are kind of providing that support so you can really let the legs relax and feel nicely at ease through the hips. So position number one, relaxation position. 10-15 minutes of lying like this will do you the world of good. Okay. And the other position that people will, will go into is, is sending the legs long, which is fine for lots of people. I'm just going to do it one at a time, lengthen out my leg, soften that, never mind, and lengthen out the other leg. And that's, I'm able to do that without anything changing, but sometimes what happens is people's spines will arch and uh, it doesn't feel totally comfortable with the legs outstretched. Great way to open up the hips though. So what you can do, if that's a problem for you, kind of extending the legs, is you could put a little bit of support under the knees, uh, a cushion, I've just got these little toning weights here, that feels good. So just a little support under the knees and it will allow more release and will allow the lower back to, to feel happy. Okay, so releasing the hips. 
Let's come into some um, classic positions which can be bothersome. Um, and the classic one is the knee fold. So I want you to kind of regard it as an abdominal exercise here. We talk about switching on our core in Pilates. So before you go anywhere to pick up the leg, taking in a breath, and on the exhale, draw navel to spine, feel that tightening in your center, which then allows you literally to float the leg off the mat. Okay, I'm just letting the lower leg relax to start with, but the work to do that leg lift is coming pretty much on my core. There is some work here on the hip flexor, so it wouldn't lift at all, but I want to feel released here. And let's take that one down. So almost before you lift, engage core, and then literally just hover, hover that foot off the ground. And when you come to this position, you're wanting the knee and the hip to be pretty much in line, and then you've got a nice efficient way of, of stacking, stacking the thigh bone there. Okay, so just little, just practicing little leg floats. And down. So engaging before you lift, exhaling, and almost like just very. So the leg is heavy, but the work is here. And then lowering down. Okay. The next stage, which we often come to, is a knee fold. Um, and then we're going to do some knee circles, which is a really nice release for the hips. Again, different levels to do it, but to start with, just take your knee in your hand and literally let your arm do the work. So smoothly, kindly, just let that hip stir with as much release in the hip as possible. And then stir the other way. So the leg is a dead weight in my hands. My arms are doing the work. And find your place to hold. It might be holding under the thigh, might be easier. I've got super long arms, so it's, it's okay. And then just let that other leg lift, engage, float. The lower limb is really relaxed. And then just stir, thigh bone in hip socket. Again, these are really restorative movements for, for the hips. Circling and then reversing. Trying to sort of keep things steady elsewhere. I can put my arm out here to steady. And taking it down. Okay. So then progressing on from this knee fold position, um, we often get asked to come into a knee fold, like a 90-90 a position. So you've got 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So that leg fold with the shin parallel, pretty much with the ground. And again, um, this is doable for most people, that's okay. Again, the weight of the thigh bone, you've got a little bit more engagement of abdominals to then do some knee stirs. And this is a great substitute for full leg circles. Um, always come to the, the knee circles if leg circles are just too painful. Okay, I'm using this leg to keep myself steady. I'm using my arms, so use what you've got to Stabilize so the leg can just move fluidly in space. Let's lower that one down. So again, on the exhale, knee fold. The lower back feeling heavy, and then just begin to stir. So I'm not altering the angle of the knee. Again, the other classic thing is that people will begin to kind of shoot the leg forward. So, so once you've got the leg in that position. Just letting that thigh bone stir in the hip socket. It's tricky with the leg with the shin raised. Just adding to the challenge. And then floating it down. Okay, so people will be like, oh no, I know what's coming next. It's full leg circle. <laughs> so again, we start just by going into that knee circle. And here's, here's the really important bit. We wanted the leg. Well, we're wanting to maintain the knee over the hip. And if you can't do that, if you can't straighten your leg without the leg lowering, because it's just too painful, uh, it's just too impossible, then 
come to here and then go, okay, I can get to here, that's fine. The, the, the important bit is keeping the knee over the hip, not how straight the leg can be. All right, so you can do leg circles from here, that's fine. Um, arms are down, shoulders are open, and then legs circling. Cross down the centre line, round and back. I'm just going to do, again, it's abdominal, so keep them switched up. Uh, if you can, straighten the leg and keep the knee over the hip, then there's your start position. Okay, so don't be super big because of keeping kind of control. One more. And then we're going on to leg number two. So again, engaging abdominals and then floating up that leg into a knee fold. Leg, keeping the knee over the hip, knee over the hip. Ooh, might get straight, but not maybe not quite. So if I straighten my leg, we don't want this. We want this or this. Okay, leg circles. Down the midline, round and back. <sighs> so again, really good hip move, hip mobilizing exercise. And then reversing, I'll demonstrate with a slightly bent knee this time. Round, same exercise. Limbs are heavy things. Use this leg to actively press down. Around, down and back. And taking it down. Good. Okay, the top prop for freeing up our hips, um, of course, is the band. So the band just um, allows the movement, but without the grippiness of the hips. And it encourages more um, extension of the, of the leg. So I'm crossing the band, I'm making the foot in, I'm just taking the elbows down to the mat. Okay, and the, uh, the, again, the great exercise to start with is just knee over hip, a little bit of choking upon the band, and then just literally opening the back of the knee and closing. So I'm wanting to keep the knee and the thigh in line. I'm not changing my upper leg, I'm just literally hinging. So again, if it's impossible to keep go, go straight, you don't go there. But with the band, you might be able to get there. Bending and straightening, pushing into the band with the foot. So again, the band supports you rather than to grip with your hips. And I'm going to do a little tick top motion over and back, over. And the band is almost mirroring the muscles inside your leg, lengthening and shortening. And then lifts and lowers down, leg lowers down kicks back up. So again, we're wanting openness of the hips and as you lower the leg, the hip can open and then, and again, the, the band takes a strain. So we've got lovely free hips and then we'll swap sides. Okay, so we're seeing the band, elbows down on the mat. Okay, and then to start with just, again, knee above the hip, it might be slightly in towards the chest slightly, um, that might feel good too. And as long as the, the, the pelvis is nice and still, that's fine. And then literally open the back of the knee and softening. Okay, so you can add more resistance by making the band a little bit tight if that's what you feel you need. And you can encourage your leg to go straight, but don't force. So, you know, play with it. And then a little bit of tick tock over. It's a nice chance to get an inner thigh stretch here. Okay. And then our leg lower. So again, lengthen the leg into the band before you set off. Really sort of feel you can get more length in the leg. So sending it along, reaching through hip, knee, ankle. One more. And then that's end of the lovely leg circles. But again, nice release of the hip. Drop the leg down, round and back. Lengthen away, down and back. 
and then let's reverse the direction, take it wide. So again, I'm active through my other leg that isn't moving. Round. And one more. Okay, and in and take it down. So really value the, your, your uh, theraband. They're really good for getting hip release. Okay, um, and then I'm not going to do too much more. Hip extension work, again, to open up the hips. The bridging is, is the classic, classic movement. So I'm just taking the feet and the arms down quite strongly into the mat. And then on the exhale, just think of the hips beginning to open. So we send the knees forward. And just stand into both feet equally. Opening, opening, opening. So if you can, encourage that line from the shoulder to the knee. Not have to adjust your feet a little. And then hips nicely extended. And then let the spine find its way down to the mat so the hip returns back to its creased position and let's go a couple more so rolling through and just visualize that hip crease opening and losing that hip crease you're lifting and then returning down okay let's go for one more i usually do in the classes probably three or four of just Basic hip rolls is what we call these, or bridging. And then letting go. A little halfway house bridge can be useful for hip extending the hip as well. So this time, I'm literally just going to float my hips off the ground, as a, you know, four or four inches or so. And then just slide away one leg, slide away. So you've opened up that hip. Okay, without dropping, so I'm keeping my, my pelvis nice and square here, but I've extended that leg, so, and then we can do some kind of circles, just releasing through that hip, a bit more space, we can move the foot side to side, just to open here, slide it in, now we're down, slide number two, so a little hover. Slide away the other leg. Okay, so really feel opened in that hip. The leg is, the foot is, the ankle, the heel is on the floor. Thank you. Circling through the ankle, reversing. And then you just to windscreen wipe off the foot side to side. Feeling freedom in that hip. Bring it in. Lower back down. Good. So, lots of ideas for hip release. Let's just have a couple more ideas lying on our side. Um, so, one can be here or here, wherever it feels good. In fact, no, let's have them here. That's what I was wanting. So, let's stack the arms and then shoulders are as stacked as they can be. I'm going to bend that bottom leg just for a bit of security lengthen out that top leg and the side lying exercises are great again for opening up the hips okay so um leg swing we're just going no sorry bicycle we're going to do i'm going to bend the knee bring the knee forward lengthen the leg send the heel back 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 there's our hip extension bend bring it in send forward take it all the way back opening back Bend in and then reverse. So take the knee back, lengthen the leg, bring it forward. Off again, bend the knee, knee behind, reach your way, return, last one. Without the lower back moving, and I'm going to just bend the knee now. So again, it's in that 90 90 position. We're just going to literally do some knee circles in this position. So you've got gravity coming down to the side of the body. Open, take the knee back, then bring it forward. Knee lifts up, out, and forward, and then reverse. Take the knee back, roll it 
foot forward, goes back, roll forward, one more, and forward and take it down. Okay, so we've extended the hip, we've circled, we've tried to release it. Um, so, just bring yourself back to sitting. Bottom shuffling is very good for our hips as well. A little bit of bottom shuffling. And then, jiggling out the legs. See how you are at sitting now, maybe. Maybe it feels a little bit easier. You can hold behind the back of the knees and sit tall. And maybe you can let the legs go down and still sit tall. Okay, hope that's been helpful. All right, count for number two workshop, all about roll-ups and roll-downs.